What's the single most important item in your home that has a value of $1 or less? A matchstick. I had a door that was sagging in my house due to the screw over time wearing a larger hole in the wall, and after some research I found a tip that shoving a matchstick with the tip broken off inside, and a dab of glue, could make the hole smaller. That matchstick was worth its weight in gold, so about a dollar, after it helped me fix a huge annoyance. Alternately toothpicks or a wooden golf tee. I use wooden toothpicks and wood glue to fill in the hole, then put the screw back in. Works like a charm every time. We use this trick often actually. Doors, furniture, windows, handrails, cabinets, I think my house might fall apart at some point. I'm sorry sir we will have to deny you homeowner's insurance claim. Why is that? Upon our investigation, we found that 90% of your home was just matches, we only allow a home to be made up for 89% matches, anything over that is just a large pack of matches. My son found a rock on the way home from school in kindergarten. We were walking home through this park we always cut through and he grabbed the rock and fell in love with it. It just looked like mud to me but who cares he loved it. When we got home I helped him wash it off in the sink and it was black and kind of bluish. He said it was awesome and then gave it to me. It's one of my most precious things in the world to me. Ah that's adorable. My stepdaughter loved gifting me rocks. I've kept quite a few. One of my favorites is a rose quartz she actually found on a hike in the mountains. It looked like a regular rock, but after we cleaned it up, I noticed it looked like quartz. I asked my friend, who collects minerals, and she told us what it was. I thought that was just absolutely amazing. There's a picture of my wife and I with our adopted daughter. The picture was taken when she was around 13 or so but we didn't adopt her until she was 16. When we took, it was just us and a kid we kind of knew from church. It's so cool to look back on and see how far we've come. Edit. Thanks for the awards and the kind comments but I can promise you, we've gotten way more out of her living with us than she has. She's an amazing human being. If you'd like to read the story, check the comments below. You didn't just bring her home from church suddenly one day, did you? Nah, you make that mistake more than two or three times and they start looking at you funny. One time, about five years into our relationship, my girlfriend, now wife, and I were in separate rooms in our one-bedroom apartment in early December. From the other room, she hollered to me what do you want for Christmas. I had been working full-time, taking part-time university classes to finish my degree, and had been volunteering as part of a youth mentor program, so I said all I really want is a break. Three weeks later, I'm unwrapping a very heavy shoebox. After getting through the mountain of duct tape and several layers of wrapping paper, I had my very own, brick. I really didn't understand what you wanted it for, she said, but you sounded so sure of it. So here you go. Cue about ten minutes of laughs, and now that brick sits proudly on my desk. Every time I am overwhelmed or feeling like I've taken on too much, I look at it, pick it up, have a little laugh and put it back so I can carry on. Best gift ever. A rock shaped like a heart. My fiancé and I took a trip to Poland and Greece. I bought her a heart-shaped rock from a salt mine in Poland, didn't cost one dollar. But at a red sand beach in Greece four days later, she found a rock that was shaped perfectly like a heart, this one was free, both rocks now sit next to each other in our house we just bought. Also one rock is dark and the other red. I so happen to have red hair and she has dark hair. She found the red heart rock for free and I bought the salt rock. Ah that's so sweet. I have a one dollar bill saved and put away in a drawer. The significance behind it is it was my last dollar before I decided to stop gambling and doing hard drugs. I had to stop cold turkey. I was so fucking done being a half human, or an empty shell. At first it was just a dollar that sat in my center console in my car. I would look at it and be reminded what I was doing. I've been sober for well over a year now. I feel like that one dollar is special. 
I know in Narcotics Anonymous they get something saying how long they've been sober or whatever. That one dollar is my token. My token for fighting a silent battle that I cannot share with people otherwise I could lose my job. When I was four or five, the last time I ever saw my great-grandmother, she gave me a dollar bill and said as long as you keep this dollar you'll never be broke. I spent it the next day on some candy. That may be my biggest regret. Hey you, that's a beautiful story and you sound like a loving great-grandchild. Just a thought, ever tried sitting down and forgiving yourself? Like, not just saying it in passing, actually going through the mental process, picturing the tiny clueless human being you were back then and forgiving them? You were four or five. You were tiny and you couldn't have known better. Your great-grandma loved you, gave your little adorable self a dollar, and I may not know her but I'm pretty sure that as any loving great-grandma, she probably would have shook her head smiling widely seeing you spend that dollar the very next day on some candy and stuffing your rosy cheeks with some candy that made you happy. She knew you would. If you gave a four-year-old a dollar with some wisdom on top, would you expect them to keep it forever? Of course not. Gentleness was exchanged. Memories were made. Could you even be mad at that cute little thing that you were, seeing yourself through Gran's eyes? It's all fine. It's in fact absolutely beautiful. I know when you say that it's your biggest regret, you probably aren't waking up in sweat and horror every night thinking about this and all and it may be a bit of a hyperbole. Sure, you're fine. But honestly, I hope you can genuinely forgive your little self, because you deserve it. I sometimes find little actions like that and putting myself in the shoes of my childhood self profoundly helpful and quite lovely. We carry a bunch of weight with us which doesn't serve us, it adds up. It's nice to offload some weight sometimes. Take care over there, smiley face.